Gentlemen, welcome into the Microwave Lab, and today we're going to be talking about something that has sort of eluded me for a while in, in radio, and in AM radio, and that's modulation. And uh, there's a lot of, there are a lot of moving parts in this, and a lot to talk about, a lot of puzzle pieces that kind of fit together, and I've yet to see a video that sort of puts them all together, so uh, you know, this, this video might get a little bit long, but bear with me, I'm going to try to paint a complete picture of what's going on with, with modulation. So, everybody's watched radio videos, uh, you know, of tuning or whatever, and you look, the guy shows his oscilloscope, and you see something something that looks like this and you say wow that's pretty and it's flowing across the screen and it's a, a nice old uh, analog oscilloscope and but what does it mean what are, what are they actually looking for in in a in a plot like this and that's that's what i was trying to figure out and it it took me a lot of, a lot of reading and a lot of a lot of doing to to figure out what was going on so first i'm going to talk about um am and what modulation actually means so modulation in a sentence is uh, the way I look at it, it, it's a measure of how well your voice is integrated into the carrier signal and then sent out over the air. So your carrier, as we see here, this is this is whatever band you're using for AM. It's a yeah, in CB radio, which is uh, how I'm thinking of it, and that's what I use. Uh, it's 27, uh, 27 megahertz band. Um, so your carrier signal is, is some frequency. In this case, we'll say 27 megahertz, and um, that is uh, modulated. Hence the word modulation uh, at your with your voice or your um, your uh, modulating sine wave signal here. So your voice is more complicated than just a regular sine wave here, but for demonstration purposes, we're just going to use uh, one sine wave, and uh, we'll, we'll look at a one, we'll use a one kilohertz uh, sine wave in a minute here, but this is just, just for the theory, we're just going to use one, uh, one wave at one frequency. And so that, your carrier is modulated at that, uh, at that frequency, and you get something that looks like this. So that's, that's what the guys are looking at here and this is obviously like I said more complicated this is the human voice which contains a lot of frequencies but uh, if you're doing a, a bench test like we will today then um, we're looking at we're just gonna use one frequency in this case one kilohertz because um, that's uh, within the register of, of um, the human voice and so that's a, a good frequency to use so so this is your this is what your radio is outputting to your uh, to your antenna and so this is this is your modulated signal um, and when people talk about modulation it's usually as a percentage you you want uh, ideally you want a hundred percent modulation and so um, the best way to do that is to measure measure your signal with an oscilloscope and so um, it just you know I have a drawing over here that I'll show you but imagine it will transfer this this modulated signal over to here and you can see my poorly drawn uh, example here and so the way you calculate your modulation it, it, this is your your output wave the same way wave, wave we looked at on that oscilloscope capture or in that that picture over there and we're going to be looking at the difference to measure modulation or calculate it rather we're going to be looking at the difference between the the peaks here and the and the minimum values here, and so uh, this is you could consider this as a peak and a tr and a trough, but um, you know this 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 sort of overarching wave doesn't it's it's not real. This is just this is just the um, how this this um, there's only one free only one frequency present here, and that's your 27 megahertz um, carrier, but it's just being modulated at whatever frequency you're you're talking or you know in this theoretical exercise we'll use one kilohertz so so what we need is we need to measure this v uh, v max and v, uh, v min and so um, the equation here is for your percent modulation is v max minus v min over v max plus v min uh, times 100 percent to give you uh, a percentage so we're going to run we're going to run through an exercise here and uh, i have uh, the um, function generator and oscilloscope hooked up so uh, we'll, we'll run through it and we'll imagine that we're using we're using a radio to get through this so i'm, I'm looking at the uh, we'll go over to amplitude here and so i have a, I have a a one volt peak sine wave and um, as usual this is um, specified in RMS so 707 millivolts multiplied by square root of two you get a uh, one volt uh, sine wave so so you're you're going you're, you you want to measure your radio or you're going to use your radio and we're gonna we're gonna key up we're just gonna press the microphone the button on the microphone to dead key and then that's um, that's just gonna send that you're, all you'll have is your carrier frequency so right now we're measuring the carrier and that's uh, 27, 27.205 megahertz. That's channel 20 on CB. That's just what I'm using, and uh, we have about a volt, maybe just a little bit over. Uh, we're measuring, so that that's your dead key. When you dead key the radio, that's that's all that's coming out of your radio as, um, as the signal. So now, if we start talking, we're going to start modulating the signal. So I'm going to come over here to the to the um, to the function generator, and I'm going to. Um, click on the modulation button. So mod, mod on. That's the equivalent of starting to talk. So now I have RF on, uh, which is the carrier, and also modulation on. And um, AM rate is our mo is our modulation frequency. So we're using what, like I said, we're using one kilohertz, and that's um, representative of 
a frequency within the human voice just to pick one frequency so now the scope doesn't really know what's going on we have to adjust our um, adjust our time scale here so we can start to see uh, our um, modulated uh, signal and so the scope is uh, being funky here we have to um, adjust I'm gonna adjust the, adjust the trigger level a little bit here so we can get the get this waveform to freeze and just we have one okay perfect so now we have our modulated signal and I'm gonna turn the intensity down a little bit it's different on camera okay that that's a little bit easier to see so that is just the equivalent of this or this and so now what we have to do is we have to measure um, we have to measure these uh, these these peak values and these uh, these trough uh, values or the max and min so uh, the max is easy I'm just gonna look over here we have um, you know just just under I'm looking at the max value just under 2 volts 1.9 uh, ish and then so to measure the minimum minimum value if I had a more um, sophisticated oscilloscope maybe I could measure this uh, you know automatically but what I'm gonna use do is use cursors here so I'm gonna click on the cursor button uh, okay I'm gonna use horizontal bars and I'm gonna take these cursors which is just these lines that uh, these horizontal lines that appeared you can see that line moving and I'm just gonna move it up into the trough there to measure the value and I'm just gonna we're just gonna eyeball it here um, just a little bit of space and okay so that's that's just about good I'm gonna measure that value and we've got in this case 60 millivolts so um, we're just looking at, at 60 millivolts at the, the measurement at that that point uh, and so now using the equation that I showed earlier we can we can calculate the um, modulation so these values here are a little bit different than what I just showed you we had 60 millivolts instead of 40 but I did this a minute I did this a minute ago just to um, so I could write it down and the values were a little bit different so um, so as a, as a peak we had 1.94 volts and the minimum was 40 millivolts so 1.94 minus 0 0.04 over 1.94 plus 0 0.04 times 100 percent gives us 96 percent modulation which is to be expected because I have it specified here as um, modulation of 100 percent so so we're off by just a little bit we have some some losses going on but that's uh, no big deal it's to be expected so that's that's what we're looking at here when um, you know when you you have a you look at something like this, and you know you're looking at. Um, this is obviously an analog oscilloscope, so there are no measurements like this. There is on this digital oscilloscope, but um, you're looking at. You're just looking at the um, qualitatively. You want to see what's going on with your um, with your signal, uh, and so um, so let's let's. Uh, tweak it a little bit here, and we're gonna we're gonna turn down the modulation level. So we have 100% modulation or, or thereabouts, which is the ideal um, value. But uh, let's let's turn it down a little bit. So let's come over here to the oscilloscope, and I'm gonna click on modulation right now. You can see I have 100%. We're gonna turn that down to 50% uh, here, and um, our you can see our waveform changed a little bit. And I'm gonna adjust the trigger here so we can we can measure okay and uh, and we're gonna do the same thing we're gonna measure the peak and we're gonna measure the uh, the trough and so I'm trying to hold the camera and move this at the same time so we have our, our peak value um, or about 1.4 volts and then I'm using the cursor here to measure measure this trough and we have 400 about 440 millivolts so we're gonna bring those values over here to the equation again and uh, as before the, the values are a little bit different than when I did it before but I had a peak of 1.42 volts and a minimum of um, 420 millivolts so we use the equation 1.42 minus 0.42 over 1.42 plus 0.42 and that gave us 54 percent modulation which is you know uh, roughly uh, fifty percent that we have the scope specified to, so that's fifty percent modulation. Um, and ideally, like I said, you want a hundred percent modulation. Um, and so when people talk about over modulation, that means that your um, your voice is a little bit too loud, or your um, your modulation sine wave signal, uh, which isn't just a sine wave in the voice, like I said, um, it means it's it's um, it's th this wave here is too big, and so you're you're forcing this um, output signal to do to to uh, look kind of funky, and so what what can happen if you overmodulate is you end up with something like this, where on the um, on the troughs you're actually hitting zero for a, for an extended period of time, and that's what causes uh, what people refer to as splatter, and you'll you'll sound crackly or or just uh, distorted. So you, when you're looking at the modulated signal here, you want it to just kind of kiss the uh, the zero point. So I'm going to bring this back up to 100 percent just to show that uh, percent modulation, 100 percent, and so uh, adjust the trigger here. 
So we're, you can see just qualitatively, we're looking, we have just barely on the trough, we're getting down to zero. And, uh, you know, so ignoring the numbers qualitatively, we're just getting down to, let's say you don't have a, a digital oscilloscope and you're just looking at an analog, you know, something analog like this, whereas, uh, and you're talking into it with your, with your voice, uh, you don't have a, a, you know, a function generator to put out a, uh, an ideal signal like this. So we're just looking at qualitatively, we're looking here, we're seeing, okay, we're not, we're not, we don't have any flat bottoms going on here, which would indicate that we're over-modulating. Um, you know, it's just barely touching the zero point. Um, we're not under-modulating. We don't have a, a large amount of space, uh, you know, width-wise in these troughs, which would be we're under-modulating. And we're not, uh, we're not flat-topping these, these peak waveforms, uh, which would mean, or flat-topping or clipping is the, the proper term, which means that um, that's more of something that's less about modulation. That's more about the power. That means you're, uh, you're trying to put out more power than your radio can handle. And so it's, uh, it's cutting it off at the top. Uh, so that's, that's about half the picture here with modulation. Now, the other thing that people talk about with radios, obviously, is power and, you know, power and modulation, and there's, they, they really go hand in hand here, and that, that was kind of hard for me to figure out. I had to do, do a lot of reading and watch a lot of videos. Nobody has really painted the whole picture at once, so that's, that's what I'm going to try to do here. People talk about power in, usually in PEP or peak envelope power. This right here, this is your envelope. This is the AM you know, amplitude modulation envelope of power. And so this is, this, the power of one, one envelope like this is what we refer to as peak envelope power. And so um, I'll go through the calculation over here, PEP, or peak envelope power is, the equation is just like any other, um, any other power equation. Power is equal to V squared over R. And so I'm, I'm using the same example I did over here where we have a max of a, about 1.9 volts. Um, and uh, so I have 1.94, 1.94 squared divided by 50 is 75 milliwatts. Um, and then so, um, yeah, so when you're talking about um, PEP or peak envelope power, that's obviously peak power when you're modulating. And, you, and what you do is you compare that to your dead key or carrier power. So without the modulation on, you know, I'll turn the modulation off here. So that's just your dead key. You're not talking. I'll zoom in here so we can get the, we can get the measurement. And adjust the trigger, of course. I do have the, I had the number from before, but uh, just to show it. So there's our, just our carrier, just the dead key. We have about a volt. So that means our carrier or dead key is um, one volt squared over 50 ohms or 20 milliwatts. And so this is, this is sort of the magic ratio here. Is, uh, you know, this should be, uh, in an ideal world, this would be 80 milliwatts. You want a four to one ratio of your PEP or peak envelope power to your carrier or dead key power. Um, and so, but the relationship here, as you can see, is we have, we have double voltage, roughly two volts, compared to one volt uh, carrier or dead key. Results in uh, four times power compared to the um, compared to the carrier or dead key. And the reason for that is we have a squared term here. So when we double it, we're actually multiplying by four because two squared is four. So, so that's the magic. That's the magic number here with the ratio is. Um, and so when people talk about swing, they're talking about peak envelope power, or they they should be anyway. Average power is you can only you know. Average, if you measured peak envelope power with, we really don't have an envelope if you're just looking at the dead key as we saw, but um, if you have a peak, peak envelope power reading meter and you're just reading your dead key, you're, you're going to get the same here as if you read average power. Um, but you can't re read peak envelope power on an average power meter. Peak envelope, you can only read peak envelope power with a peak envelope power meter or uh, using an oscilloscope, and then we just calculate the power. So. Um, so this is the, the 4 to 1 ratio, like I said, this is ideal. This goes hand in hand with the 100%, the ideal 100% modulation. So this, this is all kind of intertwined, modulation and, and peak envelope power. Um, so uh, the other example I used with 50% with modulation, we only had uh, a peak envelope voltage of 1.42 volts. So if we come down here, that was a peak envelope power of about 40, using the same equation, 40 milliwatts. So, um, if that, but that was the same carrier or dead key. So we were 20 milliwatts swinging 40 milliwatts as opposed to 20 milliwatts swinging 75 milliwatts. And so this four to one ratio, like I said, uh, coincides very closely with this, um, with this modulation percentage. Um, and so, uh, so like I said, something, some, some things that can happen is if you're, you're under modulating, which isn't, isn't very, you know, too bad, uh, you, but you're better off under modulating than over modulating. If you over modulate, you're going to lose, uh, like I showed, showed here on this signal, you're, you're, you have flat bottoms here. You're going to, you're going to sound bad and, uh, you're losing, uh, you're losing possible power here. Um, and so, because you have some time that you're at zero power, which is, 
no good. Um, so if you're over if you're over modulating, that means that this this PEP is is um, well actually un unrelated to this. You're you're uh, if you're over modulating, then you're going to have you know 120 percent modulation if you go to carry, uh, calculate this. Um, so yeah, so there's kind of a lot going on here, and it's all it's all uh, it's all intertwined. But the main takeaway is we've got the four to one ratio with the power, and we've got um, this uh, equation here to calculate percent modulation, uh, and so that's that that pretty much covers it. Um, like I said, a lot going on here, but um, it can all be done with the oscilloscope. You know, if you go and you look for a, a power meter and a modulation meter. Um, they might get you started, but the real, the best way to go is to use an oscilloscope because then you actually get the raw numbers and then you can calculate it later. Uh, when I got into the radio, I wanted to just buy all the meters that would, that would, um, just spit out the values that I was looking for, but in reality, the best way to go is to use an oscilloscope to measure and then you go and calculate, uh, afterwards because the oscilloscope will give much more accurate measurements than an, an analog meter or something like this, um. So that's uh, so when you hear people talking about swing, you know, you're dead key, you're four watts swinging, whatever. If you're dead keying four watts, you want to swing four times that or 16 watts. Uh, and so in this example, we have the um, 20, we're 20 milliwatts swinging 75 milliwatts, which resulted in 96% modulation. So all kind of, all kind of intertwined here. So anyway, guys, thanks for watching. I hope that wasn't too much for one video. This kind of dragged on, but a lot to talk about. And I really wanted to squeeze it all into one video to kind of paint a complete picture here. I'm trying to remember if I forgot anything, but uh, yeah, so that's about it for this video. Um, you know, I'd, I'd really like to get my radio in here and, and, and start working on this, but I really wanted to tool around with it in an ideal scenario first to, to really learn the nuts and bolts of it, and then uh, now I can teach all you guys how to, uh, how to do this and, and what to look for when you're watching, uh, when you're watching videos about, um, about radios. So I'll just turn the modulation back on. So when, you, when you, uh, you're watching a video and you see you see somebody looking at a, a waveform like this, you know what to look for now. You can, you can look, make sure they're not, you know, you don't have any flat tops going on, you're not flat bottoming, and, uh, or uh, you're not under modulating where you have a lot of, a lot of filler here um, in the troughs. So uh, that's it for now. Thanks for watching, everyone.